been a doozy of a day. <laughs> um, oh, oh, but that's all right. We're here now. How are all y'all doing? Hey, my little dog. Um, let me get this pulled up, but it's just, oh my goodness, <laughs> an existing video took me into the Strongman Live competition. What? Brandy. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Hey, I don't know how to pronounce that. Kissly? Sure. I made it to a live stream again. Well, I'm glad you were able to make it. I hope you're having a good day. Artemisia says, I'm sewing and watching. Will really seem ripping right now. Ugh, isn't that like two thirds of sewing? <laughs> Just from my memory of last time I sewed. Hey, Astrea. Yep, you made it from the beginning, Virginia. Hey, pro. There we go. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to get it pulled up on here. Y'all. Okay. So there's maybe like, hey, Gavin, two weeks in a row, right? <laughs> um, there is so much stuff I'm supposed to be doing today. Like in the light, like I need to prototype our March's booty box project. Um, I need to sculpt over this mermaid uh that's broken like she oop she's a cookie jar like i mean not really but she she's broken into a cookie jar i suppose um so that's a sculpting project and then i also need to turn all of these guys into little star flowers and honest to goodness i think i want to do that for on board so if you guys have any questions, you can at me and it'll highlight your comment in, nobody's done it yet, but oh, in gray. Oh, right on, just like how Gavin just did. And see on my phone, it highlights it as orange though. I really prefer the orange. It's, it is much more eye-catching. Um, I'm gonna have all my stuff on charging. Do, 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 do. Like, I didn't even have a chance to get the uh, tripod set up. Which, by the way, I want to show you guys how we do. We get a lot of questions from folks about how we do our tripods. And this right here is a microphone stand that I've put an additional 10-pound plate weight on. Because the way that this arm connects here. Hey, Hawk. <laughs> Pro goes rain. This just attaches right on to the top. I'm such a monster with hair ties, y'all. And I'm putting together a blog post on our Craft Along blog um, that is going to be a breakdown of our full setup. Well, I really cinched it the heck on there, but it's just the nub that you would normally attach the bendy gooseneck of a microphone onto. I just have that bolted down. Um, I think I really had to hammer the whole thing on there, though, because it was a really tight fit. Um, but this just has these knobs, and then we can, like, a robot arm coming out and over. And what I like about this one, too, is I can control... Oh, beautiful man. Thank you, my love. Do it. Robot arm. Robot arm. But it has, with this knob here, and then another knob here, like, whenever you have all of the joints of this, you can, I mean, pose it any old which way that you could possibly want. And instead of being spring-held, because some of the goosenecks, um, you know, for, like, recording with a tripod, or with a cell phone, in this case, um our spring tension or like a gooseneck where it's like you bend it and then it's supposed to stay there but once you put on too much weight it's done for okay same um there we go so that is how we set that up and then here i'm popping it out that's just one of our like it's not the cheapest tripod at walmart because i like that the legs are a little bit more sturdy um but it's like the second cheapest one at Walmart. We're just like a selfie stick phone holder. And then 
And I've attached these to clamps too throughout our home. And so you can see how it just clamps on. And then it's the same exact style of tripod camera arm um, as what we have here. And then I'm just going to nestle it in its little horrible noise making grabby thing. There we go. Okay, I don't think we're going to be sculpting the mermaid just yet. Certainly not first thing. But yeah, I guess the wind blew her over. Uh, we usually have her out by the fish pond, which I have three fish in. I could have sworn that I only had uh, two goldfish out there. And it, we bought those this summer that I had all of my nieces in my home. It was wonderful. But uh, we got three goldfish. Two of them look exactly alike, which is why I think for the past, like, year or so, I thought we only had two, because I only ever saw the albino one, and then the one with an orange spot. We have two with an orange spot, they just never come out at the same time, but I saw all three of them together, so. <laughs> Ooh, oh, okay. Here, let's see. Um, Hey, baby Hulgrage, how's it going? We've been watching your videos all day. Oh no, Dean, I didn't make her. Actually, Rand got me that mermaid sculpture at a Cracker Barrel. <laughs> um, so, and, like, all the paint has come off. She did have, like, a mother of pearl overlay on her tail that was, like, the scales were that flexible mother of pearl looking stuff. Ooh, that's hot coffee. Ow, 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 my whole tongue's burnt. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> um, yes! Jean says, have you tried your Donna Dewberry painting yet? I have. Let me grab it for you. Oh, shoot. Okay, so this is, this was my very first try. Um... And then I decided I'm going to do it as a 30 to 30, so I haven't done it again since then. But I had Randy pick the colors, and that's over on the Monster vlog where I'm currently doing the 30 days of 30 on the guitar. Um, we're going to be having a channel member vote over there for what colors to, of paint to use each day. Um, and it'll be, you know, 30 days of doing 30 minutes of, you know, uh, one-stroke painting. But I just practiced like some petals. I think I need to get some of that flow medium to help because my paints are all very, very dry. And then I started just, I told myself I had to use up the, um, oh, where am I going to set this? I wanted to use up all the paint I'd put on my palette. And so at the end I was like, let's just practice blending and, you know, kind of painted that way. And, uh, and then... Like, that was a lot of fun as well. And Randy had picked um, a light blue and a color shift purple. So that's why, or like a shift metallic purple. But I really like these calla lilies. Like, I was having fun adding some little details and stuff. And just practicing. Like, I'm super proud of that swirl. Ah, Shelf! Happy crafter for one month. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool that you met her, Hawk. I have a bunch of her books and videos. Right? Our friend Kim sent me a whole bunch of books, like a stack. And so I've got lots of um, books to work through. But I, I'm really excited I found her YouTube channel as well. Like, what a, what a time to be alive, you guys. Like, truly, I wouldn't get to indulge in not half of the crafts that I'm interested in if it weren't for YouTube because it's just it's so nice okay to just be able to google something and have someone who's passionate about what so they're talking that, uh, about stack of sticky notes? <gasps> yes may I have them back no <laughs> why would you want them back can I give you one of them no I need the whole stack you need both of them <laughs> yes both of but I then guess I you can give me one Okay, would you want the lemon yellow or banana yellow? <laughs> Don't look at me like that. 
<laughs> well, is that lemon yellow or banana yellow? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know what got into me. <laughs> but I was like, I'm gonna start a fight right now. <laughs> Y'all the look he just gave me. <laughs> oh no. Hey, if you knew <laughs> oh my god, you have Yeah, I don't know why Randy woke up at 3 a.m. And uh it's been nonstop torture for him ever since, I think. No, that's not true. Have you been having a decent day? Other than being awake? Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Okay. Minutes, hours. Banana. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you guys. Do what in 40 minutes, it'll be three hours. Oh my gosh. Or 12 hours. Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm going to take you in the kitchen. Mate. Well, take me to the kitchen. Um, <laughs> Simone says, I would bet Pro made that exact same face just now that looked like you grew an extra head. Yeah. <laughs> well, it also it was an age-old debate because we kept seeing this, like, um, this reddish-orange orangish red, burnt salmon, whatever color we decided to end on. But we kept seeing this car around town and it was like the only car in town that was, that had that paint job. And so we'd be like, oh, there's that, there's that orange car. And the other one of us would be like, what color? <laughs> and then, so we would go into this whole debate and like, we'd argue about crayons. Um, so really real life or death stuff here. Um, <laughs> But it was a, it was an ongoing argument for like a few months, and then we finally settled on. I think Randy got wore down and just gave up. So, but it was a burnt salmon was what Randy got worn. But <laughs> he's like, you wore me down. Oops, I bumped the tripod. Oh man. Oh, that's super cool. Okay, so I've got this silicone mat that I used to put underneath my other molds to pour resin on. And look at that. Like, that was just a little piece of the resin, but I think that's so cool looking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set that right there and save it. <laughs> Adam says, he's stuck with you now. Yeah, for better or worse. <laughs> Gavin says, can't tell y'all been together over 10 years at all. It was 18, I guess, last month. Last month 18 18. years. That's wild. Our relationship can drive a car. Yeah. Our, our relationship is still not old enough to buy cigarettes. <laughs> That's fine. Ooh, that's that, that coffee's still very hot. Who? Let's see. Oh no, I'm in top chat. Really? I thought that was like an hour ago. How do I make it be? You've been live for like ten minutes. You've been live for ten. All messages. They changed the way you change it from top chat to live chat on my tablet since the update. Cause I accidentally left it plugged in. Ah, well, congrats, Gavin. 11 years. Ooh, Janine says, Donna's brushes are the best for one stroke and shading. I've had mine for years. Right on. <laughs> hey, Gigi, how's it going? Randy needs more coffee. He brought me more coffee. Randy's actually not much of a coffee drinker. I think he, he got himself a soda. Oh, which one is it? Is it the root beer or the 7-Up? Oh, the, oh, the no sugar Dr. Pepper? Oh, it's still fizzy bubbly. Ah, Chizzy says I'm coming up to 50 this year. I need a medal. Right? That's amazing. So I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to stow all of this wire, and I'm not entirely certain. I guess I'll put this one down in the bottom of the other 16 gauge. Wow, 17 years. 
<laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Like, how wonderful is that? I hope it's wonderful. Squirrel, where? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty distractible today, you guys. I'm sorry. But I'm trying to get my workspace all tidied. So I'm, I guess I'm going to zoom back out so you can see everything. But I had an idea. I found, well, Randy had found some of this chain. <laughs> and uh, after after wearing it around the house, um, I was looking at it and I was like, I think I'm going to, I'm going to use these as, um, for wire wrapping. Oh, you found the, <laughs> but wouldn't that be pretty neat to like. Almost like, um, like it's a gallery wire of sorts. So that's why I've got this here is because I want to try doing that. 35 years. Wow. <laughs> Ooh, Judith says I like the Dr. Pepper and Cream right on. I haven't tried that one. What? Oh, <laughs> Hawk said it's something funny to share with you. One of my people that follow me on my Facebook page just sent me a 20 pound bag of, bag of dried beans. She said she wanted to make sure it wasn't going to go, that you weren't going to go hungry. Oh, Hawk. That's so kind of them. Plus beans. What kind of beans? Like pinto beans? Virginia says my husband and I got married on the fourth anniversary of our first date. So we've been married 23 years and together 27. I still annoy him daily. <laughs> well, it's, uh, I had told, what was it? The vow that didn't make it in. I... I like micromanaging you so much, I signed up for the lifetime subscription. And I think Randy actually thanked me for not putting that one into the vows, but it was still, <laughs> it's, I, I love it. Peeps Pepsi, I have not, wow, 53 years for Teresa. Ah, Kyla says, I had two starter husbands until I found my forever one. We've been married 23 years this month. Oh, congratulations. Okay, so we've got our work surface as clean as it's going to get. Those kind of have to live there for a while. And I'm waiting on some jump rings to show up in the mail for attaching chain to these guys so we finally got a whole bunch of these made so y'all are getting a sneak peek on what's new this week that we'll be doing in our uh, shop update wow Artemisia I really like that one with the titanium plated crystal And then we got a bunch of this style made as well. But they don't those don't have the chain on yet. Okay. And then yeah, so there's one with that kind of with the hematite and then the faceted bead. And then ooh, another with the crystal. I just love that. Like I've been having a lot of fun making jewelry this week like randy came over and sat by me in my station oh this one's got herringbone wrap on it too i figured i'm gonna do some like this with the herringbone wrap but i'm gonna do others where it just has a bead link that way sometimes this might be a bit much for some folks's aesthetic and sometimes this is just perfect so i like doing both hey tiggy Ooh, Stephanie says, I got to make some of those triquetches. You did those in a live stream, didn't you? Um, I had done the wrapping in a live stream, but I had soldered the component uh, independently. But we are putting together a tutorial on how to do this with a solder, like how to make the soldering or do the soldering, um, how to do it without soldering and the how to wrap either of those and then finish it into a necklace. Um so it, it is in a live stream somewhere, but y'all know how we are in the live streams. So I don't really stay uh, on task very well. And it, then it goes pixelated or, you know. 
Hey, London girl, how goes it? Hey, Marty. Hello, Vaughn. Or it might have been years ago. Yeah. Like I, I've been hoarding those for a minute. Hey, dancing tree. Okay. So these are the beads that I'm going to be using. Well, I just finished cleaning up my work surface. And now I'm going to fiddle around with the camera until everybody's seasick. There we go. Ooh, um, oh, yeah. The nausea is free. Um, and then I'm going to wrap a bunch of these into starflower pendants because um, I think I had set this whole tray up for that project and then this tray has been holding just these project things for like a while so I'm gonna wrap them in silver because I'm not certain what we need for in the booth but silver always sells well um <clears throat> though I don't know I might do silver vintage bronze and copper yeah that's what I'll do so here I have, sorry, the heater just turned on, so it's going to be pretty loud for a little bit. These are 10 millimeter beads, and here I'm using a 10 millimeter amethyst. <laughs> Can't argue with the price. I love that. So we'll want a string. I'm using five beads, but that's just me. And, oh, I don't know if I said this, but this is 22 gauge wire. And I've wrapped three times around this pen. And then I'm gonna wrap our loose tail of wire around once, twice, and thrice, full wraps. And then I'm gonna whoop, slide the pen out of there and bending using my thumbnail at a 90 degree to the bail and then I'm going to slide these beads up and start to just loosely carefully bring them around trying to keep this bead centered in the center line of the bail Ooh. and then just trying to keep them all equidistant I usually do this in a 20 gauge but I love the 22 gauge for it now I've come up here and wrapped twice around the neck. If this is the head and this is the body, that's the neck. So we've wrapped twice around. And now, the way that I hold this with the bail in my left hand, this is the top and this is the bottom. So I'm gonna cross isolating the two on the bottom and then we're going to flip it and I'm gonna isolate the two on the top and then we flip it and isolate the two on the bottom and then we flip it and isolate the two on the top maintaining tension just to keep things nice and tight and if you forget where you're at we're at the top so now we'll come over here and i'm going to cross at the bottom now here i'm going to want to go underneath this little bit of tail wire and it's going to come in just on the other side, again, if this is the head and this is the body and that's the neck, this strap, this wire, crosses there. So this one's going to cross on the other side of the neck of the bale. So that was isolating the two on the bottom. And now here, isolating the two on the top, but I'm making the conscious decision to set the wires next to each other instead of crossing. I don't know how well that's going to come through with it being a live stream, but the wire's crossing and then next to itself. That's so blurry. But it's the difference between I want the wires sitting next to each other instead of crossing over each other. And then we're going to flip this over, and on this side we make sure that the wires cross over each other. Because and this is going to get us more consistent results with how the star is shaped on the other side. So again, as we flip it, you can see those wires are next to each other. And then, so we're going to want to make them next to each other on this side as well. And then we're flipping over. 
And again, making the conscious decision that those wires cross on the tips. That's the only spot I'm really paying attention to is the tips. Because if we keep our tension maintained and the tips consistent, then our stars will come out really cool. So with this one, again, these go next to each other. So I'm kind of having to press with my thumb to get it to go around the bead. And that is our finished star. And you can check it because there's a star on this side. And then there's a star on this side also. So from here, I'm going to grab my wire snips. Woo, there they go. And I'm going to snip with about four inches. And then I'm just going to wrap this like a little scarf around his neck. And so now, if... <laughs> ah, because these are his arms. <laughs> what are you looking for, baby? I know we bought glowing dark blue. I can't imagine where it would be. I want to say we got it midway through the rearrange, which is not pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, that was a very hectic time of our lives <laughs> that whole two months ago. Um, let me check this drawer. Nope, that's just clay. Not there either. Um, hey, babe. Did you check the paint closet? No, I did not. That's the only other place I can think that it could possibly be. Randy's been working on his painting. Aw, uh, thank you, Mike. Okay. So now, where were we? Oh, yeah. So there are his little arms going off this way and we can come down and I like to do a little bit of an itsy bitsy spiral. Oh, right on Chessie. This was, it was either the first or second tutorial I, video I ever made, first video at all that I ever made and posted to YouTube. So we've done that little spiral around there and you can, you don't have to add the spiral. I like to leave one side with a spiral and one side without. Or sometimes I'll do spirals on both, but the spirals are a great way that if the tip is a little messy in that spot, it's okay. You can just come <laughs> smush a spiral over it. You'll be fine. The wire wrapping equivalent of put, put a little dirt on it. What is it your dad would say to you? Rub, rub dirt in it? When you would get a boo-boo? Yeah. Like a skint knee? Put some dirt on it. Put some dirt on it. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, that's the uh just just smush a spiral over it. It'll be you'll be yeah. alright. <laughs> hey Lunia. Oh, it's going pretty well. I'll do just a little spiral on this side. I can't help it. I love the spiral. And then, a little added bonus touch that we can add, especially with this 22K, 22 gauge that we're wrapping with, uh, that you can, even after all that wrapping, you can still do some neat stuff with it, and it's not too stiff. <clears throat> so we're just coming around, and coming through. And I'm just using this to do a little vine on the bail, because you could have added, if we had left our wire a little longer. Ah, uh, hey, Ginny. If I had left my wire a little longer, we could have added some small spirals and stuff over the bail also. So, I've only recently uh, invested in some 22 gauge wire. And it was, I'm not going to lie, a little out of my comfort zone, or I guess. I mean, it's not that I'm not comfortable with it. It's just that it's different from what I've used. And so the delicate little swirlies that you can get with this are so delightful. Like, especially if the, the, the thinnest I had really wrapped like this with was 20 gauge. Because I just would jump straight from 20 to 24 gauge. And so we've just made a little spiral and tucked it right under there. But yeah, there's a little... I think that's my preferred side. Little star flower. Ooh, coffee. Hey, Lisa. Just smush it. Just smush it. 
When you do your rap, you smash it. Okay, so now we get to bust a bunch of those out. All a uh, quick time. So now I'm gonna be wrapping with some quartz crystal. Ouch. There we go. So we've got our five beads on. <laughs> so seems motherless goat pulls out seam ripper again. Oh no. Hey Brooke, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm just looking at you. Okay. Randy's just rummaging through the whole house trying to find... And, I mean, I have a memory of us shopping for it, but I don't have a specific memory of us, like, buying it and bringing it home. So I, I don't know to, if to be like, no, we don't have it. Like, I can't tell them with certainty. Oh, it's been a pretty good week. Right on. And you may be right. It, I'm afraid we might have lost some stuff in the donation boxes. But hey, in which case, somebody might have just gotten a bag fresh from the store. <laughs> okay, trying to stay in frame. Yeah, and all oh, these are so fun to make as earrings as well, y'all. Is that the sound of you giving up? Yes, yeah, it's the sound of me. Well, you, you could go order some online. No. We could go to Hobby Lobby. Yeah, that's more of what I'm leaning towards. Ooh, I love. Can I look at little dumb boxes? Why? Because I want little dumb boxes to put my little things in. <laughs> like, I just found, like, the other half of my entire acorn collection. That box isn't. This is a very nice box, Randy. But it is not big enough for the for the other half of my acorn collection. <laughs> I need a different box to put my things in. <laughs> Can't have that box. <laughs> Wait, no. What? Are these? Hey, those are my sticky notes. Those are carrot orange. <laughs> yeah, but I'm using them. They're oh, the worst he hates kind. These ones. Oh, hey, Michelle. Well, we're just making a mess. Doing some wire wrapping. We <laughs> just said I love you guys. We love y'all too. <laughs> Ooh, wait till you get your package to get boxes. Oh, okay. What's that, baby? Well, I found that. Oh, hey. Look at all the green in his hair. Yeah. No, there wasn't any though. Exactly. Oh, okay. <laughs> I get you. Oh, so there's a little quartz one. So I love how quick these are. <laughs> Sabaya says I collect tiny bottles that I swear I'll use one day. Promise. Nice. Ooh, Hobby Lobby has most of their beads half off this week. I wish I had some money. <laughs> so we're, we're saving to pay our taxes, so we're having to like kind of go no spend so it's for a little bit like everything's okay okay like but i can't go to hobby lobby when their beads are half off <laughs> like that's asking for trouble <laughs> no. oh a lot of their charms are on clearance ah i amethyst like that's when i need to get you know the concept of a no, I'm not even. <laughs> I was gonna say the concept of like a sugar daddy, but it's like a bead mama. <laughs> I fully support you getting a bead. <laughs> <coughs> oh my god, you're killing me. <laughs> um, ooh, 
shells is one thing I feel weird about is using glass beads with good wire. Like I feel I should be only be using gemstones. Pear wire is my good wire. Right on. Now I get that, but you have to question yourself on where that construct, like where that conception is coming from. And I'm going to FaceTime with you guys for a little bit because this is, I'm not going to be too much talking about this to get any sort of crafting done. But so the biggest thing is I used to have this conception about glass beads that they were cheap. And I'm going to say some are, but some are like beautiful pieces of art. Like I didn't understand or realize like the kind of work that goes into some of these handmade beads and even the pressed like check glass and these faceted bicones and different things like that. So you might want to do some research on the history of glass beads and you know handmade beads and things and just the richness of so many different cultures um, making beads out of glass and in different ways and like kind of how it spread and evolved it really changed my entire perspective I'm like now granted there's gonna be some like uh, cheap like pretty cheap crappy glass beads and the way that the way that I would identify a glass like that is something that the color is like painted on it like to where it's just been dip colored because then whenever you use that it's not going to age well it's gonna like the paint's gonna rub off and it's gonna be just a glass of bead um consistency in size is something that cheap beads which when i do shaggy loop bracelets i love using cheap beads those are my favorite um because they're all so irregularly sized which is maddening whenever you're trying to do like loom weaving or having like an inlay or like something that would benefit from a meticulously grid like style bead but with the all the wonky sizes and shapes and stuff it makes for a really cute chaotic like organic looking piece of jewelry but that's something that whenever somebody says cheap glass th these are the things that I'm thinking of not the concept of that it's glass at all you know so I think um, would you use sterling with glass beads? I feel the same about resin beads unless I make them myself. Yeah, there's, especially with how accessible resin making has been become, um, people kind Ooh. of, oh, there's a bunch of them. Well. Oh, Randy, you found it. I might have. Um. here's the thing. since resin is so accessible, people kind of view it how maybe people used to view macrame whenever we first got into it. the same trip we bought this. And it's also the same, there was a silver that I bought for the uh, sword in the other picture. Mm -hmm. Good luck, because we brought about 700 of these bins in the house. I know. I'm sorry. Hey, that's... I'll take this from you. That's more polymer clay stuff. I don't know where the speed square should go. Whenever Randy and I first started in on the vending circuit and like doing craft shows and stuff, the perception of macrame, like hand woven macrame jewelry, was that it was like cheap rubbish. Like, and as someone who was doing macrame, I was like, this took hours with my hands <laughs> like how could it have such that like a low perceived value and so i think resin has started because it's so accessible because that was the thing is everybody made macrame jewelry they were like we did that at church camp why am i going to pay 50 dollars for this you know intricately woven with high quality cotton like anyways um but you know, so it kind of changed their perception of stuff, whereas now people are starting to, in my experience, with trying to sell my resin work, um, that people are like, oh, well, that's, that's just resin, I can do that. And it's just like, uh, yes, and that's what's so fun about it, but also, <sighs> but yeah, I love stone beads, I love glass beads, whenever they're good quality or low quality on purpose. Um, and so, should I put this away? Ah, bad Michelle, do it. Should I put this away? Oh, sure, but I don't know where it, where it, like, okay. Top drawer, or? No. 
Okay. Well, where does it go? Ah, paint closet. It's disheartening. Oh no. Here, I'm gonna tighten the tripod so it stops wobbling so much. Um. Oh, thank you, Rachel. I feel beautiful today. I went through. I've been having such a hard like mental health week I guess like it's when everything in life calms down enough when all of the journaling and planning and everything comes through and my life calms down enough that that's whenever whatever uh emotional stuff I haven't worked through that I've been apparently repressing starts bubbling up um so it's just been a really hard week just as far as like negative self-talk and different things um, and so today when I was doing my hair, I put all my dreads in and every single one of these that I wove into my hair, I, I looked at my, and this is going to sound so dorky, but I don't care because it worked, but looked at myself in the mirror and I one of I had said, you are clever. I am clever. And then I thought of times that I've been clever, which is not often, but it's often enough that that's one of them. And see, I'm trying to work on that stuff. But, and then, and it's things that I tried to focus on stuff that wasn't something that was like an accomplishment, like an, an, a measurable accomplishment. Just something that was like, like one of them, I was like, I'm kind. Because sometimes I don't feel kind, but I'm trying. And at least I'm trying. Like, that's got to count for something. So it's like, oh, but I get snarly. It's fine. But I'm working on it. <laughs> like, so. Oh, Lisa says, I commented on your recent video and said you have a beautiful aura and personality. Oh, thank you. I've, I've been hugging a lot of trees lately. Like, goodness. Because <laughs> we've, oh, a lot of y'all have been following along with the channel for a long time. Like, Randy and I had, like, this plan um, of... We were going to buy property and start, like, a campground, like, you pick it farm craft retreat. And it was going to be amazing. And we were on course. We were saving money. We were hustling, you know, doing work with our business, getting that bread. And then, like, the pandemic and everything. So we've gone from having a really big, wild-feeling dream on the horizon to figuring out how to be real comfortable and happy with where we're at because we don't, I don't want to waste another moment waiting for you know our forever home when we could go ahead and get right to being just as happy as we possibly can be here in this house and so something that I hadn't realized like I was so stuck in this mindset of I can't wait to meet the trees that I'm going to grow old under that before I knew it a decade had gone by and I had been not really hanging out with the trees the way that I typically you know hang out with trees so it's I've started appreciating what I have a whole lot more and it's just felt really great trees need hugs too <laughs> we do I'm, I'm starting to really appreciate it and I'm starting to get the courage to try to tackle things that need fixed about it that seem so big and kind of scary like um like reciting parts of it and you know we're not reciting the whole house but it's just problems that have deeper conditions that need fixed um we can still at least patch them so they stop getting actively worse like i'd really love it if raccoons couldn't get into the roof that'd be cool <laughs> Brooke says the pandemic derailed a lot of things. It certainly made my long-term plans crash and burn. I'm in a pretty good place now, though. Yeah, and sometimes, man, sometimes you just have to slog through it. Like, yeah, it sucks. But you you just keep trudging through because that's, that's where it counts the most. When, if you just put work in when it's easy, you know, where does that really get you? It's the work that you put in whenever it's real hard that gets you where you're going. And from what I've seen from a lot of y'all here in the community, y'all have been doing so good. And you inspire me so much. Just a, a lot of us are trudging through, but you're doing it with grace. And that's that's amazing. Goals. 
<laughs> Brooke says, how can anything be both as cute and as evil as a raccoon? Right? Because I don't mind them. I love the little trash pandas. But <sighs> not in my roof. Because they like claw on the walls and it sounds horrifying. So <laughs> it'd be like, they're just really crappy roommates. <laughs> the raccoons and the squirrels which I was looking at the bathroom screen today where it's got bullet holes from where my bonus dad Fred was sitting on the toilet shooting with a little air pellet gun at a squirrel <laughs> I was thinking I was wondering if I could just whip stitch um, the screen so mosquitoes can't get in <laughs> hey pinky how's it going How often does a person have to get vaccinated for rabies? Because I got bit by a dog, like... It's like eight months, isn't it? Every eight months? No, it's... You're supposed to get a shot a month for eight months, I think. Oh. I don't know. It's been a while since I've... Because it's... To use that knowledge. Yeah, when I was a kid and had gotten bit, um, one of the three dogs that was in the group, I didn't know which one had bit me, but one of them was rabid. And so I had to get the, the shots and my dad was so mad because he wasn't mad that I had gotten bitten. He was mad that I got bitten at like the beginning of my bike ride. And then I just kept riding my bike for the rest of like the big loop um, to get back home. And he was mad about that because I, I, I understand it. Like I could have had freaking rabies. Um <clears throat> Marty says, wow, somebody is hillbilly is my family. <laughs> oh, thanks, Lisa. Right on, Lumia. You got this. Do what, baby? What do you mean, coulda? Coulda what? Had rabies. What? <laughs> no, I don't think I had rabies. Oh, my gosh. Did I? <clears throat> I don't think I did. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, I could have just turned around and come, like, it was a two-hour bike ride, and I got attacked in the first, like, ten minutes, so, ooh, embroidery floss, yeah, what are we using now, ooh, these are Aquaterra Jasper, I believe, and beautiful specimens of them at that, that would be so cute, I might do a little whip stitched, like, mushroom or something, on the window screen. Oh, Brooke says <laughs> rabies is 100% fatal. So you would know by now. Right on. Well, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> so. Man, get all phonies. I, Brady says I get all phonies. <laughs> I had a pen at one point in time. But I've lost it. Yeah. Howl at the moon. Where the heckins did my pen go? Oh, there it is. Okay, I found it. <laughs> we have twist ending. Vaughn was a ghost all along. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what I've been thinking on is I'm just a figment of everyone's imagination. Yeah. Well, I mean, Stephanie says, okay, you're a wire wrapper. Couldn't you use like aluminum wire or something? Yeah, but I want it to look pretty. <laughs> Simone says we have the absolute fattest squirrel I've ever seen that likes to run back and forth on our roof sounds like he's going to fall through I call him chonky <laughs> well, I know another story of a squirrel <laughs> yeah Tracy's yeah yeah okay Tracy's got a squirrel that lives somewhere and I realized that our cats are declawed. Mm -hmm. Not by her hand, but when she adopted him. But he'll come and he'll just hang on the screen, rubbing his genitalia all about. Um, oh, hey, Anne, how's it going? Of all the times to come in, this is a squirrel on my friend's living room screen taunting her cats, by the way. <laughs> like, just for context. <laughs> 
Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> so anyways. It's funny because it's like, oh, you're, you're just, you know, embellishing on the story, but then we were there. No, yeah. And she, she had pictures. I mean, it sounds outlandish, but that's why she's got proof. And then to see it with my own eyes. Lunia <laughs> says, what an interesting topic to walk into. Right? Okay, so top, bottom, top, making them be next to each other, and bottom, making sure to cross them. Then top, then bottom crossed. Oh, that one's so cute. That made a really, like, it's not geometrically perfect, but it's pretty close. Red flower, blue thorns. <clears throat> Red flower, blue thorns. Okay, so I'm going to snip that. These are Aqua Terra Jasper. And they're a um, 8 by 12 millimeter bead. Mm hmm. And you can do this with more beads or fewer beads. I think uh, CSL Designs um, just did a really good tutorial on using like a bunch of like bicone beads and doing like, it's what I would call a fractal wrap, but it's that string art style wrapping around. Okay. Oh no, Lisa. Well, practice makes for progress, for sure. There we go. Well, I'm fixing to make a whole nother one, Lisa, so, um... Stay tuned, stay tuned says Randy. Oh, well, thank you, Phyllis. These are really ex exceptionally nice specimens. I think our friend Judy had sent them to us. And I'm just now making myself actually use them. Because whenever I get beads that I really, really like, I'm so bad about just never using them in anything. And then it's like, come on, Vaughn, what was the point? Beads are to be shared. As much as I love buying and hoarding beads, I love seeing people wear them. And I think that's why I like making jewelry so much. Because I don't wear... Well, I certainly don't wear as much as I make. But... I'm trying to work on that, kind of getting dressed up more just for me around the house. Ah, uh, right on, Valerie. He looks spooky like he's going, woo, like, like a ghost up that way. <laughs> uh, I'm wrapping with 22 gauge, but this can be done with, uh, shoot, any gauge of wire. Um, if you have a much thinner gauge, I would do wraps around this ring to make it more stable. I like that he's a spooky boy. I used to make these the most out of 20 and 18 gauge, but I'm really loving the 22. Okay, so... Oh, sound is back. Oh, I didn't realize we had lost sound. Randy says he hasn't. Or are you not? Are you very loud? Not too terribly loud. Okay. Okay, so these are electroformed rings, or electroplated, rather. So they're very lightweight, but it's real copper on there. <clears throat> Uh, right on, Dancing Tree. That's good to know. Now these are hollow beads, though, so it's kind of tricky. Oh, and then there's one extra. Okay. 
so Lisa, this is um, where I start is I'm coming in about six inches from the end of the wire and I'm wrapping around a pen and I'm going to wrap around three times. You could use a knitting needle or mandrel pliers or stick mandrels, but just three times around the pen and then it's going to be oriented like this. where the three full rotations around the mandrel and then exiting perpendicular to the wire that's still on the spool with the beads on it. Oh goodness, Anne. Uh, Lunia says sound, good, sound is good, stream just sputters a bit. Yeah, well it's, it is going to space, so I guess, <laughs> I guess it'll do. <laughs> so I've wrapped three times there and we have the rest of that wire coming off to the side pushing the beads up to the base of the uh, bale to get them to kind of space out a little evenly sometimes it can be tricky getting the bale to be perfectly centered so just be patient with yourself be patient with the progress and the with the project okay so now coming across, I'm going to pull a little bit more wire off the bale. Hey Mary Hart, how's it going? And then I'm going to start coming across the bottom, coming across the top as we flip it, coming across the bottom too, flip it, coming across the top too, flip it, and now here and just nestle it so that it's crossing as opposed to over here on the side. And you could do that if you wanted to stylistically, but this is a nice opportunity to have it lay like this. Ooh, yeah, bird's eggs. And then, so we just went across the bottom two. So as we flip it, the top two, but here, instead of that one being crossed, we want them to be side by side. The sunset's beautiful outside. And it's not even really the sun setting. I guess the sun just came out, but it's low enough in the clouds that it's still cloudy. Sorry, the whole day just brightened up. Okay, so we're crossing over and then side by side. And crossing over and then this is the one where to get the spooky boy you just lay it and it kind of makes it go a little sideways or you can go around that side of the bead it's just whichever you can. oh my goodness <laughs> gravity oh, oh, oh. Super double. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Nancy says hello from Vancouver, Canada. What would be the end use of these beaded beauties? Sturdy enough to use as keychains? Um, honestly, that would depend more on the stone because key keychains can get kind of beat up. So I mean, these ones would probably be fine, but I wouldn't use like, um, malachite or turquoise or something that's a very soft stone. Um, lapis might be a little soft for just the brute, the bludgeoning that would be happening. Um, the, the beads are pretty exposed on this design. Um, but something that's like a Mohs hardness of like seven amethyst, quartz, carnelian, uh, the agates, a lot of those would be just fine being um, on a keychain. But these I'm going to be using as pendants. We're just going to be selling them in our booth with like um, the little pendant, pendant flat with hooks. We'll go through and just like hook them on there and then if somebody wants it, we'll probably charge five to ten dollars for these. I think Randy's been having me charge eight to ten. He comes through and I really count on him a lot for some perspective on our pricing 
because I'm still of this like um, scarcity mindset sometimes that I'm like, man, I need to, you know, nobody's going to want to pay, you know, more than $5 for this. And Randy's like, how many times have people paid, you know, way more than $5, like in the auctions and stuff, like stop undervaluing your work. Other people, yet. Yeah, don't undervalue your work, you guys. Other people will do that more than enough for you. So it's we've got to be the ones who value our work. If we expect anyone, you know, we have to set that boundary of, you know, what level of respect we're going to command in the marketplace whenever we're out and about. It does, Nancy. It makes a pretty nice pendant. Um, we sell chains for $5 in our booth. Um, but sometimes whenever we sell them on our website, we'll have it where they already have a chain uh, included. But a lot of folks that I know who sell jewelry provide cords for free. Um, and that's a wonderful business model for them. <laughs> Kelly says I sell the star pendants on a cord for 15. Right on. That's awesome. Oh my god, how did I get so many loops on this? Well, I'm going to add some more. Okay. Gavin says, you have to charge for experience and time you've been crafting and honing your skill. As someone just starting, I sell my stuff for cheap. That's good. That's solid advice. <clears throat> like, that's, that's wisdom right there. Ooh, Brooke says, I've also seen vendors provide a simple cord, but with the option to upgrade to a chain. Yeah. Options are nice. They are really nice. They enhance the experience. Like, I've never really felt like I've pulled folks in with the options that we offer. Mostly because we don't have, like, signage or anything advertising it. Like, they have to literally, like, first be interested in our stuff and then walk forward and, like, uh, you know, have that sales experience. But providing options enriches that experience once someone is in your booth. And, you know, part of the shopping experience, like, if they just wanted some jewelry, they'd have popped on Amazon or Wish or something and bought it. You know, but they won't part of going to a craft show or going to a boutique or going to a convention is that experience. Um, and so don't undervalue the you aspect of your business, of that part of that interaction that you provide, because nobody else can provide that. And that's something that, because <laughs> especially selling jewelry, y'all, if you've ever been at the, um, Ooh, that's a good idea, Jennifer. She says, could you do a spiral down over the center of the pendant? Just says something different. Yes, I will do that on the next one. Oh, and that's going to be so pretty because we're going to be using these titanium-coated quartz beads with little jerseys. But if you've ever been to, like, vending at a craft show, it can really feel like just a whole sea of jewelry. And it's like... And we were always multimedia more than anything, so we always had a mixture of... You know, ever since like the third or fourth show in, we had a mixture of wire wrapping, chainmail, macrame, um, beading, um, polymer clay. Like it's, we had a whole bunch of everything, but there was always somebody with like almost the exact same, you know, stuff that we have. Like, you know, like we were never the only jewelry person with primarily gemstones or crystals. We were never primarily the, you know, stretchy bracelet people like there was always exact and direct competition everywhere <laughs> would you agree with that statement yeah but um but what do you think about that one more layer on the hand because i think i've got the aura where i want it yeah that's really cool 
But um, I had the confidence, like between Randy and I's sales and just doing our thing. Like we were so passionate about what we were doing at that time that it didn't matter if we were if we made chain mail and were in just a row of nothing but twenty chain mail vendors. I knew that if people stopped at our booth, they were going to have a good time. It was going to be, you know, at least a pleasant interaction. Like I was there to make that experience just like the best thing ever. Because if I, as a business, you know, as the merchant in the booth, whenever we're having a good time with the customer, that's, I'm enjoying my job too. Like having it be, you know, kind of trying to make it the best experience shopping wise for the people in our booth makes being in the booth the best experience possible. So it's just like it made it such a joy, even on the long days of standing, even whenever sales weren't necessarily moving, I still just enjoyed the whole interaction. Like it's such a great way to meet other people. Um, you know, best way to you make friends with another polymer clay artist is start talking to him about polymer clay you know so i'd see people walk by you know wearing something and i'd be like it's a cool necklace um but i didn't want i didn't do that as much because i didn't want folks to feel like i was just complimenting them as like a carny way of hucking at them to be like hey come pay money for balloons like <laughs> like i didn't want to seem dis dis disingenuous i didn't want to seem ungenuine I don't know. I didn't want to be a big phony. So, but people would come over and they'd, you know, be like, oh, this is so cool. And then we could talk about, you know, what it was made out of or what technique we used or, you know, and folks would typically, if they were very crafty or interested in anything like that, they'd bring that up. And so it was a great way to like prompt conversations with other crafty people. So we got to spend like our whole day. Well, Randy worked, his, worked himself to the bone, but I got to spend the whole day just talking about jewelry and, you know, meeting and connecting with other crafters. Like, it was so much fun to vent. I forget why I started talking about that, but I was enjoying re-living re, uh, the memories. Yeah, no, I went on a complete and so total side tangent. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, just having the confidence to know that we provided something nobody else could have. And that was that we were us. And that's something that we're the only ones we need to compete with, you know. It's just be the best us we can be. And so that's, you know, for y'all in your booth, don't undervalue the you that you bring to to your sales experience. Ah, uh, hey, Eddins, thank you. <laughs> I'm still tickled about it. Ooh, Janir says, I'm hoping to do my first festival the end of this year. It's a three-day event. How much inventory do you try to have on hand per day? A lot of that um, would be based on our booth setup. So if we only had three days at a six-foot booth, you know, there's only so much frontage that we can stock. Whereas if we have three days at a 20-foot booth, then we're going to have to bring at least as much, like my personal like quota is if we have our booth space I want to have enough to fill that whole booth up three times so if you have like uh let's say I can have 100 pendants out 50 necklaces and uh 100 earrings I'd want to have 300 pendants because three times as much as what I need to fill up our whole booth you know, 150 necklaces and 300 earrings, you know, so it's, we'd need to, that's how I would base my numbers. And that way I'm prepping for the sales that I hope to have. Because until I, even, even collecting data year over year um, at all the different conventions that we used to sell at, it was such a crapshoot to be able to be like, okay, I expect to make this much at this convention based off of previous years if i had to you know bet that i'd be making that money for certain 
I would lose every time because it's like you do not like there's no certainty to it. So especially if it's your first time at a location or first time vending at all, um, prepare for the show that you hope to have because, you know, inventory doesn't go bad. You know, unless it physically like gets damaged or something, but, um, you know, the preparation that you do for one show or one vending event, um, you're now just that much more prepared for the next event if sales aren't, you know, as good as you would have wanted. Yeah, that you can only make as much money as you have inventory to sell. Um, and typically, so Randy and I typically try to have like $10,000 worth of inventory in our booth minimum. Um, currently, we're at like if we sold every single piece of everything out of our booth, that's like $40,000. Um, that's never happened, but I'm ready. <laughs> like, oh boy, am I ready? <laughs> um, I'm using Bet ten. Me. Do what? Bet me. Bet me. But um, I'm using ten millimeter beads here. Um, these ones are eight by ten, or might be eight by twelve. I don't know. Ten to twelve are my favorite to use on these. <laughs> um. Honestly, it depends on the event. It depends on the year. Uh, lately, earrings and finger rings have been the biggest sellers for us, but pendants and necklaces are never far behind. Bracelets are always a little bit of a craft shoot because it's like sometimes we won't move any bracelets at all and other times we'll sell out of some of the styles. And so it's like, I don't even know, man. <laughs> like, Oh, thank you, Anne. Uh, right on, Gavin. We'll have an excellent day at work. Hey, hey Anna. Penny. Penny Van. Are you in the house? Is there a Penny here? <laughs> yes, I think so. Some of them are glass. These are glass. These are pearls. These are, I think so. <clears throat> My hands are cold. Is it cold in here, babe? A bit, but not too crazy. Lisa says, I got some beautiful 10 millimeter fluorite that I want to attempt this with. Right on. Marty says, my mantra has become, never know what people will buy. Right? Yeah, it's like, how to prepare, it's like, I don't know, try to think of everything and be prepared of that for that. <laughs> like, it's like a plan for the worst case scenario, prepare for the best case scenario. So be, you know, be prepared. Because if, what if you show up to an event and everything's going perfectly, but you only brought like $500 worth of inventory and you sell out three hours into the first day? But the rest of the event keeps going on being really, really good. And so it's like, you know, I, I try to be ready to have my booth look just as full and inviting and representative of the full spectrum of our artwork, both through different techniques and styles, but also through price ranges. Like, I don't want to be sold out of cheap stuff or expensive stuff come Sunday, because if somebody comes through and wants something cheap, I want to be ready. And if somebody comes through looking for something nice, I also want to be ready. So it's just, <laughs> just think of a scenario and set yourself up for success for it. And then just think of another scenario and set yourself up for success in that one too and eventually you'll still be surprised by all the weird crap that can happen when you're out on the road that you're like I haven't planned for this but this is what's happening you mean someone wrecked a boat into the bridge yeah yeah what do you mean somebody wrecked a boat into the bridge that literally happened <laughs> We were going to take the bridge over St. Louis, but somebody had wrecked their freaking pontoon into it. And then we had to drive in this van we had just been gifted by my mom and bonus dad. So yeah, this was over 10 years ago. This was over 10 years ago, but it was a 1970s, like, shag and wagon style conversion van. Pronounced, pronounced shag and wagon. Shag and wagon. <laughs> <laughs> das Auto. Um, oh... I keep forgetting the spiral over the center. I'm sorry, Jennifer. Let's 
let's see. But we had to drive. It was already going to be like a 10 hour ride back home. But then with the detour, it ended up being like 16 hour drive. It was supposed to be a 16 hour drive and then it turned into a 19 hour drive. A 19? Okay. But it's because we had to go down and cross over on Memphis because we didn't have money for a hotel. We didn't have any food in the van. This is why I was bringing snacks now. Like, I always bring snacks now. Because <laughs> we didn't have any money for food. Like, it was... Oh, my goodness. Okay. This one did not work out the way that I had hoped it would. So, I'm actually going to extract the spiral. Um, and then... Hey, Randy. Can you help me try to remember to um, do a spiral down the center on the next one of these. Right. Okay. Well, you should got to catch me once I get going. I completely forget. Why are you so full of hate? <laughs> I do too listen to you. I just huh? ignore you a bunch. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Marty says, as a truck driver, I always have food and water. Always. That's wise. That is so wise. Tell you one thing, after that 19 hour drive, we keep a pooping bucket in the We do. We keep a bucket in the car. Uh, it's a little like trash can, but it is a big enough bucket because do not trust that McDonald's cup to hold as much as it says it holds. Do not trust it. I know, I've tried. <laughs> oh, Anna, I am using 22 gauge wire. Like, man, y'all, I am so happy to be back in a minivan. We gave Maddie the Maddie Mobile. And that's all taken care of, which I'm so happy about that. Like, very, very happy to have been able to give her that car. But even happier that we now had an excuse to force us back into a minivan. Because we found one for an amazing price. And so far, knock on wood, um, it has been a really good van. We've driven it to Sam's Club like twice. It's awesome. Goodness, what's happening next week? How do you mean? It's going to rain for three days straight, and mm -hmm. the next two days is just going to be snow. And it's going to be 20 degrees. I never sent you that meme, did I? Of what? Um, the seasons. I think I might have sent it to Maddie. But it was, um... It was like winter, full spring, and there was an arrow pointing at it that says, you are here, and then it was like second winter, and then like other funny names, and then like summer was like hex butt crack, <laughs> and then false fall, and then second summer. <laughs> like it was just, so we were in full spring this week. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's a week for like yeah. a month calendar? Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Goodness. I opened up my Instagram and... Ooh, Sabaya! Yeah. <whistles> she was so pretty, though. Um, yes. Oh, that's such a good point. Hawk says, because I'm a beat artist, I'm always working on something. That way people can see that I do make things with my own hands. And that's a great conversation starter, too. Just... I, again, for kicking off meat and other crafty souls. Oh, there, Sabaya. <clears throat> um, we display these pendants, Anna, on... Oh, I've got an extra one of these as well. Um, those pendant flats that we have a tutorial for, it's a piece of grid square, like the college dorm snap it together, like, rack bookcases that are like squares um they're my favorite thing to use to build the display in the booth especially for lightweight stuff like jewelry um 
but I took one of those and I covered it with some foam as like a padding and then I put a layer of leather over that and like punched a hole so the hook could come through that I'd made with like I think 18 or 16 gauge wire 16 gauge wire would have been nice I might have just used 18 though um but yeah so we, we have a whole tutorial that shows how we make it why is this oh right on Marty <laughs> Huh? So why is this my mother sitting in the back of a police car? The light is green. You can go. <laughs> Here, no distractions, please. I'm kind of. I'm trying to. I'm gonna power through this, and my hands are cold. I can't. I think I'm hungry. Marty, do you have a different username that you go by here in the chat? Like, I feel so bad that I'm like, I I know you, but who are you? Y'all, y'all lose me when you uh, change your screen names or change the pictures. Joe, it says running out of inventory. That's when you hope that you have wire and beads and tools with you and that you are fast. Yes. <laughs> no. Wow. Right on. Okay. Well, hey, Marty. <laughs> oh, Sabaya. Oh, that's cool. Hey. Okay, we're doing a spiral in the middle of this one, you guys. I remembered. Okay, doing them next to each other. Doing them across. Doing them next to each other. Doing them across. I am not going to forget, Vaughn, that we're doing a spiral down the middle of this one. Okay, so I've brought it around twice. am I going to do this? Just me wouldn't know how to change it if I had to. All right on, Marty. You know that's fair. Okay, so I'm going to snip. I'm going to give us a, some, some to play with. Hmm. So I'm wondering if I can feed this wire down and through. So that it looks like it's coming from inside. Okay, so that's how we came through the back. And we're coming just right there in the middle. And then this is where I'm going to bend and start doing an itsy bitsy spiral. Just an itsy bitsy spiral when you wire wrap. It's not in the middle anymore. Okay, so I'm going to get my, these are my very petite tipped round nose pliers. I'm just getting in there and holding that in the center. And then slowly building the spiral around. Go through the middle and put it on the exit. All right, on do it. Nice, Abaya. <laughs> okay. I'm going to continue weaving this around the bale. makes a heart of the flower. Oh no, Phyllis. We're still here. Ooh. Yvette says, back in the day when I had roommates. <laughs> I couldn't say my hands are cold without my roommate saying I can pinch hard followed by a pinch on the part. <laughs> what?
Hey, Randy. Mm -hmm. Could you type to Phyllis to let her know she might need to refresh? Sure. Thank you. It's so handy having Randy here to help, because sometimes you get a little overwhelmed by everything going on. Like, just trying to make the project and keep up with chat, and, like, sometimes I'll be hard on myself, too, and then it, I have to remind me that it's, it's like, it, I don't think it's normal to try to juggle, um, you know, 30 conversations at once, or however many. She, she just huh? Get back from Do what? Simply, she just get back from Ah, okay. Gotcha. Well, thank you, Randy. Oh, okay, you bet. <laughs> well, that looks super cool. I love that. I really want to try one with these. Sorry, I'm trying to get my hands warm. Artemis, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see. So we only have... Yeah, I really want to try some of these pearls. That one's all small and stubby. You know, whenever you have irregularly shaped stuff, it can make it a little tricky to get the star to be centered and nice. I have um, typically a bead like if these are ten millimeter beads, I would put an eight millimeter bead in the middle. Now, I don't want to do the, the pearls so tightly that they get um, abused and like smushed and crunched up against each other. You want to give them enough space to be able to exist. <laughs> Sometimes they'll wiggle around all weird until you get it, each of the branches of the star wrapped. No, I gotta do that one on the top. There we go. Then crossing down at the bottom. Then crossing at the top. Then crossing at the bottom. Then crossing at the top. Like, I just love that. Well, I'll have to see if I can find some crystals to pop one in the middle. Gotcha. Earlier when you were asking me this and Phyllis message. 
Yeah. Socks that had toes in them. I clipped the ends of the toes. It was the perfect opening for my fingers to go through. Right on. Oh, I would be so embarrassed to how filthy my little hand mittens would get. <laughs> I would look like an, like an, an unloved child. Just a scrubby little thing in the street. <laughs> like little uh, Oliver Twist hands. Anne says, missing your cooking and garden vlogs. Well, we're getting back up into the swing of things with the 30 days of 30. And I'm hoping to still have, um, possibly not this week on the homesteads, but at least a once a month garden video. And please, sir, may I have some more beans? <laughs> oh, I love <laughs> I love that Svega. Um... <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, we'll have um, a once a month garden video and then a once a month cooking video. So I'd still like for it to, you know, end up being we have the daily 30 of 30 videos plus a once a week video over on the monster vlog. Well, it's, I, I don't know yet. Like, I'm trying to not um, overload the plate immediately i'm gonna overload it gradually this year uh is the plan because <laughs> to say that well to say that i'm not gonna overload my plate this year is unrealistic um but if i could just be gradual about it i don't need to rush into doing too much stuff i'll get there eventually <laughs> it's the journey <laughs> Oh, Anna says, what length of chain do you use for your pendants? Um, we have our chain, we cut it to 18 inches, and then we put on 4 inches of extender chain. Um, and then we'll, we also try to bring at least some chain with us that we could make, like, custom lengths for folks in the booth. Because we can always shorten an 18 inch necklace for like if some folks want like a 16. Um, we chose the 18 because it's easy to make it shorter, but it also puts it to a pretty decent length of, you know, what's it when we put five inches of extender chain on there, a 23 inch necklace. It's that's pretty comfortable on some folks, um, and unless they want us to make a solid jump to a 30 or 36 inch. Um, and so in which case we would just cut those, you know, uh, there in person as somebody wants it. Because that's a lot of chain to tie up into a single necklace that very rarely do we have folks who um, want it that long. Though I don't know, maybe it will uh, come back around in style. That'd be cool. I love long necklaces on other people. I, I torture myself every time I wear one because it's always clanging on stuff. Like, I'll bend down to pick something up and my necklace will hit me in the face. Um, so, 
<laughs> but they're beautiful on other folks. Banana, 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 banana. <gasps> what? <laughs> it's a bay. I was listening to a podcast and they kept saying back to earth. I said creations every time in my head. For <laughs> sure, we're not a cult. No, no, no. That's definitely just a club thing. <laughs> We're not suspicious at all. Right on. Kissing Lee says, I just had to measure my own necklace to see what I find comfy. Apparently 24 inches. Yep. That's, we, we found the 18 to, to 23 to, you know, was in the middle enough that it's very easy for us to add either just an inch or two or to trim off an additional inch or two. Oh, I haven't. I bet that would be wonderful. Walk in the rain says, Have you done this star pendant using the seven chakra stones? I have not. Yo, Brandy, what are we gonna have for dinner? Uh, oh, that's right. We're actually going to uh, go out and socialize for dinner tonight. I think that's going to be very fun. Uh, bye, Angie. Thanks so much for coming and hanging out. Y'all, I am scared to use my Lampwork torch. Like, I have some sort of block about it, and I'm, like, so frustrated with myself. Like, I'm scared to light it. I don't know. Oh. You with 3D peoples? Yeah, but they cooked me dinner. <laughs> so I'm going to go eat it at their house. And they're a very, very good cook. And I love them. So, yeah, I'll put up with 3D people. What? Janir says, oh my goodness, I'm having the same issue with my metal clay torch. Dude, <laughs> like, I don't even know. Like, because it's like um, whenever I first started getting into torch work, I was just like... I had a little bit of apprehension about it, but the more I've done it and the more I've seen other folks, like, get hurt and just different things, like, I keep, oh, I keep just perpetuating this negative block about it. So hopefully we'll figure something out because it's, I know we need to be brave and just do it. Just do a piece that's a planned mess up. Like, I am going to ruin this bead, um, but I'm going to do it. It's always the thing that pushes out the floodgate that gets the flow happening like it's always overcoming that initial blockage that is the hardest part and it is so easy to stand on this side of pushing through that obstacle and to be like yes that's the hardest part all we have to do is do it but yet i still haven't gone and lit my torch <laughs> so it's easy to be brave when it's, i'm not the one up on the edge ha ah. Oh, yeah, this works with 8mm. I've done as small as 4mm beads, and I really like those for, like, earrings and stuff. Okay, got that 
open up that way. So today we are streaming publicly until 4 p.m. And then we're going to take a bit of a break so I can have a snack, hydrate, um, you know, just take a, let my throat recover from talking. <clears throat> and then we will be streaming in our after party um, from 5 to 7 tonight. <laughs> oh my gosh, Lisa. Well, thanks for hanging out. And in the after party, we are going to be prototyping March's booty box tutorial project. Because it has been since about November or December since I made that design. And so I just want to make a few of them before shooting the tutorial that way um you know maybe i'll have it mutated some more variations since last time i tried it or you know just having a couple of examples on hand of different things that could go wrong or the different things that you could try um so we're going to be prototyping that out in the after party Right on, Lydia. So just twisting this around. But yeah, don't be afraid to leave yourself just a little bit of wiggle room between your beads because that's going to give you space for your wire to settle in and be comfortable. It is 3.51 p.m. in my neck of the woods. Right on. Well, I think I can get two more of these pendants made, maybe, if I apply myself. Yep, side by side. Or no, that's... Oh, there we go. Side by side. And then cross. And then side by side. And then cross. <clears throat> you type in an apple, baby. Hmm? It's buzzing. <laughs> Sorry, I can't move those myself. Oh, it's alright. Is everything okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. They just it started to sound like you were typing frantically. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's how like paranoid I am. Then I'm like, is everybody okay? <laughs> Everyone's fine. Okay. Joette says, I have done torch work, but it was always at a glass studio. I have everything to set up my own for over a year, and I'm a little scared. I don't want to blow up my house. Well, I haven't blown up my house yet, so I'm sure you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Says I, who still haven't lit my torch. I mean, because I've done it with map gas. I've, like... No, I, I've done torch work. Like, I, I have done it in this house with this setup. I don't know why I'm so scared. And my inclination, whenever I'm feeling this way, is to procrastinate. And so I'm going to specifically procrastinate every time I think about, you know, whenever I'm not live streaming, but whenever I think about... Um, you know, and feel guilty that, oh gosh, I feel bad that I'm scared of my torch. I go and I watch a video of somebody doing torch work, or I go back and like flip through and start to read on like, what is it that I'm scared about? Is it the glass popping? Let me read about how to, you know, the, the section on heating your rods up like they're in the beginner's part of the book or 
you know, is it, I'm worried about, you know, what's the oxygen to propane mixture? You know, I don't remember what that is. And that's the one that I need to look up next. And so I am allowing myself to procrastinate, but I'm procrastinating with a whole lot of intent behind it because every time I let myself procrastinate, it's just chiseling away at whatever excuses I'm using to stop myself. So like, oh, well, I don't know. Oh, I'm scared of the glass popping. It's like, okay, well, let's get, you know, educated on that and maybe wear um, my wool fleece or better yet those leather or Kevlar sleeves that they have for doing glass work. Like if, if this is really something I'm worried about or I can just practice heating my glass really slowly or maybe I can just keep a bottle of burn salt on hand and just accept that, um, accept that it's going to happen. Hey, book, how's it going? Boom, says pro. <laughs> yeah, these are freshwater pearls, so they're kind of irregularly sized, but everything else is, um, a 10 millimeter bead except for these ones that are in... I think an eight by 12. Ooh, Katrina says, just always remember poop when using the mixture. That's propane oxygen for turning it on. And then you turn off oxygen and then propane, right? Katrina says, I remember my mind was blown when I learned Boro doesn't pop the way softer glasses do. What? Are you serious? What? Also, Katrina, can you re-explain poop to me? Because now I'm freaking out that what's poop? Okay. But it's, do you propane, light it, and then add oxygen? And then you turn off oxygen and turn off propane? Uh-oh. Hey, June. Don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. Mm -hmm. Ah, Joet says, challenge time. I'm going to set mine up this week. I challenge you to do the same. Ah! All right. Oh, I can't go light it right now. Except for maybe. Randy shakes his head no. You got three minutes. I got three minutes. He said, Randy says that's an after party thing. Maybe. No, but if I do it, then Joette's got to do hers. And I don't want to let her down. If you do it, mm -hmm. then you're going to have to start the other kiln. No, I'll just do teardrops. And pop them into the... No, I'll just light it. Because that's what I'm scared of, is lighting it. Okay. Will you hold the camera in case I blow up? The phone's expensive. I'll yeah, heal. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Oh, my coffee's gone. <laughs> Let's go set stuff on fire. Will you be my cameraman? I'm going to go do it right. Uh, the whole part. <laughs> well, okay, but can I just a little bit? Hey, Wendy. I don't want to blow up and have you be mad at me. Do what? It's too late. Two letters. Nah, there's shit all over my desk. Okay, I'm not gonna do it right now. <laughs> Look at me procrastinating. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, we will see y'all in the after party. Thank you guys so, so much for coming and hanging out with us. <laughs> Maybe I'll have the desk cleared off for the after party and we will light up the torch then. <laughs> but is that acceptable, Randy? Mm -hmm. He's so sassy. Um, but yeah, we'll see you guys in the after party. And happy crafting, you guys. Mwah. Bye. It would just be like a little fire. Yes. Oh, I gotta click it's the button. It's a little fire. Yeah.